Testing, testing. Good. All right, we're over like that. I'll tell, I'll tell. Okay, I'll tell Juan. Good evening and welcome to Linnell Gymnasium on the campus of Thorne Academy. I'm Zach Taranko here with Cole Purvis, Josh Balsfer, and Troy Bolduck here on TA TV bringing you the Hoops for Hope game at TA. It's a big one. TA girls 12 and 0 taking on the Gorham Rams who are 7 and 4. But more importantly, we have, as I, as I just said, the Hoops for Hope event, a very big event. And as you may be able to see, the crowd is filled. The, every single stands, every single bleachers. Uh, set is stacked and full tonight. So it's going to be a great atmosphere and a great event. So, Cole, before we get into anything about Hoops for Hope, let's talk about the game first. Obviously, TA 12-0. Almost lost to South Portland uh, earlier this week. We're able to pull that one out 58-55. to What have you seen from this team so far, especially in their two matchups already against Gorham? Well, if you haven't been following this team all season, it's a stacked team that has playmakers all across their roster. They have four they have four playmakers who can really fill up the stat sheet and uh, get into double figures a lot of nights consistently. And Coach Marston has to be having a blast coaching this team because they are really dynamic in everything that they can do offensively and defensively. And for Gorham, a team that lost in the state championship last year, they lost six seniors who contributed big time for their team. But they still have a solid squad, and uh, they come in at 7-4, as you said, and ready to try and knock off the Trojans. These two teams have played twice already this year, and uh, – they know each other well, so there will be no secrets tonight, and TA will try and pull through for the third time against the Rams this year to try and get to 13 and 0. As we start to get closer to game time, we're going to send it down to the head coach of the Golden Trojans, but also one of the uh, the creators and um, leaders of the Hoops for Hope Foundation. So we're going to send it down to Eric Marston. If all the girls uh, basketball players through grades three through 12. Come on down on the court with the varsity girls here. Raise money, get recognized. Come on down. Okay, if I could just have everybody's attention, just a few minutes here of some special recognitions and some thank yous, I appreciate it. Uh, first, I just want to thank everybody for uh, braving the elements tonight. It's a great crowd coming on down. We really appreciate the support um, and the fact that uh, Gorham was willing to come down and uh, you know travel down uh, 202 and 112 and after snow blowing all day and everything, that's really great. We appreciate it. And Oxford Hills came down to support Thornton Academy and I'm not pretty sure it was Thornton and not Gorham. Unfortunately, we've all been touched by cancer in one form or another. Um, and fortunately with um, Hoops for Hope and your support, we've helped ease the burden of the diagnosis of cancer for so many of these community members. Whether that's through direct financial assistance for medical bills or by helping someone feel more confident in public with the purchase of a wig from Madeline's hair replacement, every little bit helps. And we thank you so much for that. Some specific thank yous. Really want to thank our Hoops for Hope board. Without the board members, none of this would be possible. Really like to thank everyone who donated raffle items that are all out there, some great raffle items. Take a minute to look at the sign with all the donors' names on there. So many of the people that are sitting near you that are so generous to this community. Um, I'd like to thank Swim Lids, Karen Gellis for the, um, all the shirts and sweatshirts. Every year she does such a phen phenomenal job with, the, with uh, all the printing. Uh, I'd like to thank Thornton Academy for their flexibility with still having this game, the, the maintenance crew just top-notch, plowing and salting all day, um, and you know the willingness to still have the game despite the conditions. 
uh, and the generosity of Thornton Academy for donating tonight's ticket sales uh, to this very important cause. I'd also like to thank Thornton Academy Boosters for donating half the proceeds from tonight's concessions. And uh, very importantly, our platinum level sponsors of Paquin and Carroll and Sockle Benefit Savings. So thank you to all, to all those people. We give everybody a round of applause. And just a reminder that we have 50-50 that's available all throughout the, uh, the first half here. And raffles, the same thing. You can bid on raffles right through, the, right through halftime and then we'll announce the winners in the second half. Make sure you're looking at your phones in case you get a text saying that you won. Kids, that probably won't be a hard thing for you to be looking at your phones. I think the Gorm coaching staff's gonna have their phones ready to go, see if they won some items along the way here. So keep your phones out, see if you want anything, it'll come via text. Most importantly, I just want to recognize the fundraising efforts of the girls' basketball program. Uh, this is truly the heart of Hoops for Hope, and this is where the majority of the money comes from. And it's very important that we uh, especially recognize them. Every girl has the goal of raising at least $100, and I'd like to recognize the kids that have done that. So raising between $100 and $200, Lila Gregorkis, Hayden Chagru, Finley uh, Hubix, Kennedy Ray, Lily Ring, Danica Bodner, Brooke Bodner, Lily Leverrier, Sienna Eldred, Clara Hunt, Lauren Kotsis, Isabella Abood, Kayla Tabone, Addison Bushy, Ava Zafferson, Cam Roach, and Jessica Dow. Big round of applause for all of them. What's kind of important to note about this fundraising as well is this isn't typically just one, you know, a girl going to one business and saying, hey, can I have a, a check for $100 so I can meet my quota? It's typically on the sheet, it's five, $10 here, there, and they're really, you know, making an effort to go out and ask people in the community, which is really special. Raising between $200 and $250, Emily Coleman, Carly Pelletier, Madison Tripp, Julia Collins, Maddie Shepard, Addie Lamy and Olivia Lamy. And raising over $250. Claudia Pelletier, $265. Elena Keegan, $315. Avery Keegan, $320. Riley Rose, $340. Sophia Saroyce, $500. Addison Sulikowski, $520. Olivia Saroyce, $565. Should be having you give a little wave here, by the way. A lot of people know you, but if you just give a little wave here when I call your name, we're getting some huge numbers here. Nina Roach, $805. Ella Marston, $850. Macy Harrison, $952. Reese Harrison, $952. Morgan Bolduck, $1,000. Kylie Lampson, $1,110. All right, and I hate to do this, but I have to. If I could have Hannah come on up right now, please. I hate to do it because I'm so sad to see her go for everything that she's done for this program and Hoops for Hope. And Hannah this year raised her highest total yet, which is 
$3,350. And she's been doing this since she was in fifth grade, and since then, she has raised $15,000. So I just thought it was really important to recognize Hannah for all the, we all know how much good that money does, and I just really wanted to make sure we gave Hannah a special round of applause. $15,000 since fifth grade, 3,000 this year. Thank you so much, Hannah. Thanks, Ben. So that brings our grand total, total fundraising for the girls up to $14,786 this year. And with apparel sales, <laughs> trying to get me to break down there, <laughs> with apparel sales and raffle tickets um, and the, uh, the various 50-50 items that we're looking at probably about $25,000 like our annual average. So thank you so much everybody for your generosity. <laughs> and lastly, Everybody that raises $100, their name gets thrown into a little, a little box here, and we'll call out the lucky winner of a crisp $100 bill. If we want to have somebody come up and grab that, let's see who this is going to be. Oh, this would be great if we could get a gritty on the way up here. Kennedy Ray, come on up here. Kennedy Ray, yes! Thank you, Kennedy. Good job. Hey, hey, you want your money? All right, look at that right there. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks. Thank you so much. Oh, oh no. Nancy, will you come up, please? Oh, this is not going to be good. <laughs> Coach Marston and Nancy, on behalf of the senior class, we'd like to present you with a token of our appreciation for the sacrifice you've given to this program and <laughs> the leadership you've shown us through Hoops for Hope. You've allowed us to be a part of something bigger than basketball and give back to our community. And we love you guys for that. So, Thank you, girls. Good stuff. Thanks, Thank you, guys. We are back here on TATV as the pregame Hoops for Hope ceremonies are just about concluded, as you saw there. Um, some great uh, totals there from the money raised from all the girls from all grades. We want to, uh, again, thank Coach Marston for letting us mic him up for that. And also, um, I want to thank everybody here who's here for this event, everyone who donated. Um, it's such a great event. And sometimes it's more than just about basketball. You can still go find more information or donate at www.hoopsforhopemain.com. On that website, you can find the Venmo, if Venmo is easier for you, or you can donate just on the page. You can also find some information about past times on the Hoops for Hope game. We get back into the warm-ups here with five minutes to go. Cole, we did talk about both teams here, but it was a, um, this TA team, 12-0, 5-0 at home, 7-0 away. Team is led by Sulikowski with 14 and a half points per game. She had six games this season with 15 or more points, and her highest is 27 versus South Portland, which we were talking about just a little bit before. And in that game, TA was down um, 
by nine at half, four going into the fourth quarter. And they eventually won that game by three, 58 to 55, which was a very good win for this team, keeping them undefeated. Gormas played this team twice, Cole. Gormas lost both, but the second matchup was a little bit closer than the first. Assuming that Gorm comes out with a fire and comes out with some energy, what will TA have to do to secure this win? Well, first of all, before we talk about the game, again, a great ceremony as always, and thank you again for Coach Morrison uh, miking him up for that so you could hear him better, and the Gorm players wearing the Hoops for Hope shirts as well is awesome too, and uh, a lot of money raised by the TA players from grades 3 through 12, and so a great night here, Hoops for Hope night as always, and uh, the TA team looking to get it rolling again, looking to move to 13-0, and which would be incredible for this program. And, uh, yeah, they played some close games recently. Uh, Gorham kept it to five last time these two teams played. And then South Portland, they escaped. They had to uh, – I remember you said it on the boys' broadcast that they were down by nine, I believe, going into the, the fourth quarter or halftime or something like that. So yep. they had to come back. And really the first time all season that they've had to play from behind. And they were able to uh, pull out a comeback and – get back into that game and win it to come into this game undefeated. And they're going to have some tough games coming up tonight against Gorham and then Chevris next week. And so Sulkowski definitely had her signature game of the season with 27 points against South Portland. But we'll see if they can spread out the scoring a little bit more tonight, get Hannah Cook back involved. Same with Jess Dow. And uh, Kylie Lampson has been pushing the pace for this team all season long. So it's a strong starting lineup. Uh, the bench has been a little bit inconsistent at times, but they have had good performances from Morgan Bulldog and Claudia Pelletier too. So we'll see if they can put up a good team effort tonight and try and sweep Gorham on the season. Definitely, and you mentioned that Chevrolet's game. So while we got a second, we'll read off to our upcoming streaming schedule here on, on TA TV. So tomorrow, we'll have a shortened crew. It'll just be myself, Josh Postfer, and Troy Bulldog, but we'll, we will get the game for you. It'll be boys hockey versus Brunswick, uh, which is tomorrow at 5.50 p.m. That's going to be a big matchup for TA as they just lost their second game to Falmouth. They're now 9-2 and on the season. They're playing the undefeated Brunswick Dragons, the class, the reigning Class B state champions. And then next Wednesday, probably the biggest game of any sport that we've had on TATV this year so far. Girls basketball versus Chevres, the one of the powerhouses of Class AA North. It'll be the first real big test for TA this season. That'll be Wednesday night at 6 p.m. We'll have a full crew that day and uh, definitely I think we'll be having a little, a little bit of fun with that game. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you might see. Stay tuned. You get yeah. You'll see a picture maybe. There for that. Yeah, a picture or maybe, maybe we'll get some video footage of us. It's a surprise, It's though. a surprise, yeah. We're not going to tell you what it is, but it's a surprise. I want to thank some of our sponsors before we get going here on TATV. I want to thank uh, Saco and Biddeford Savings, Packwood and Carroll Insurance, and the Webb Family Law Firm who hosts our pregame and postgame show, and Top It Mobile Ice Cream Cart who hosts our halftime. It can get very hot in this gym, Cole, especially with so many people here. The best thing to cool you down when you're feeling a little warm it's top of mobile ice cream. Definitely. And one of these days, we're going to have to taste test some on air. <laughs> we're going to have to get that going. Because uh, you know, we've talked so much about it, Cole, that we, we need gotta to actually try it. We gotta try it. I know it'll be good, but we still yeah. got to try it. Looking at Gorman on, on the opposite end of this one, 7-4. and four, Two of their losses have come to Thorne Academy. Lost early in the season to Sanford in overtime and lost to South Portland 69-59. to They're led by Ellie Gay, one of the starters from last year's team that won the state championship. She has 10 or more points in every game except one. Her season high is 23 points. Some other contributors on the Gorham team, Vanessa Walker, Julia Reed, and Elizabeth Ouellette. And Ellie Gay was the only returning starter from last year. And so Gorham, almost similar to their boys' team, they can shoot very well. Yes. And if Ellie Gay and Kaylin Curtis has been a big playmaker for them as well. If they can shoot the three and just get hot, then they have a good chance to knock off TA considering they came within 10 points of them twice already this season as we get the starting lineups going here. As you see, our camera going back and forth here. You can see how many people are in this gym. This is. The most packed a game has been this year so far. And more than that, you can see the pink and the white and even the blue, the tie-dye blue. That's the new sweatshirt color this year. Um, just so many people buying sweatshirts, buying T-shirts, supporting Hoops for Hope. Let's get the starters for Gorham. 
They will not be using the pink basketball in the game. They used it for warm-ups, but they yes. will be switching back to the orange one. Kind of wish they used the pink one. That would be cool just to do for one game. That would be cool. But that, that whole far bleacher section over there is completely filled. There's not an empty seat in the house over there. So Expect a good game. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm expecting something very strong from both teams and hoping for a good matchup. You know, we, we talked about it a few times there. Um, when we first opened Coles, that TA had a tough time against South Portland. They had to fight their way back. Against a team like Gorham, fighting back like that is going to be a whole heck of a lot harder. It is definitely going to be tougher against a team that's going to take advantage of your mistakes a lot better than South Portland had a losing record. That's the shocking part about it. Gorham is a team that's very strong this year, one of the best teams in AA South. And uh, it's good that, you know, obviously you want to win these fundraiser games, but it's good that they play a good opponent to give this crowd a good game to watch as well. So we will see who pulls through here at Linnell Gymnasium. Yes, we will. G TA girls in their pink jerseys. We're getting going here. It's the National Anthem in Linnell Gymnasium. And here we are in the little gymnasium. Let's get going here. Big game between the 12 and 0 Thorn Academy Golden Trojans and the away team, the 7 and 4 Gorham Rams. Again, I'm Zach Taranko here with Cole Burvis, Josh Pulsfer, and Troy Bullock here on TATV. Another girls varsity matchup. They got some big matchups coming up in the next couple of weeks. This game, Chevrus. They will also have Bonnie Eagle and Edward Little. They are the only remaining winter sports team here at TA that is unbeaten. So we'll see if they can continue that tonight, and especially in this first quarter. A lot of teams have seen this kind of shock at how much TA will shoot the three, and they'll do it early and often. But Gorham's seen this team twice already. And again, as I said in the open, there's no secrets to how these teams play. They know how they're going to approach these games. And whoever can step up tonight and play their best is going to come out with the victory. Gorham will start with possession. It'll be... Julia Reed, who takes the ball up the floor now in the corner. Here is Summer Gammon. Gammon lost control, stolen away by Lampson. And a good start for the Trojans. Lampson takes it. Now back out up top to Sulikowski. TA still missing. Catherine Blank wearing the boot on the bench. Jessica, Jessica Dow gets back her own pass. Three from Lampson. In and out. Rebound to Jessica Dow. This three goes up from Cook, and it's good. Hannah Cook, her first three. She's getting to work. She's been on fire. The best three-point shooter this year for the Trojans. And in the first quarter of the last game that we broadcasted against Noble, Hannah Cook had 14 points in the first quarter, and she starts it out with a three-pointer from the top of the key there. And again, they're going to shoot the three early and often, and they do so here, one for two from three already. Great job so far. Great pass in and foul on their way out. That's Hannah Cook with the foul. Good defense. Look at 
Replay here. Check out the replay. Dow underneath. Didn't have the angle. So he's going to try and kick it out. This three from Lampson was no good, but they'll eventually get the rebound. And Good work by Dow. Always making those hustle plays. She hasn't been averaging the points that she did last year, but she's doing so much on the offensive glass. And as you see, Hannah Cook knock down the three TAs in business. That was... Lauren Dunbar got one of two free throws. It's 3-1 TA. So Lukowski, a flip pass off to Jessica Dow. Setting a screen, nice pass inside to Cook. That came from Coleman Lampson, grabbed the rebound, tried a reverse layup. Did not work out of bounds, stay TA possession. So the one huge thing in girls basketball is finishing at the rim and making your layups. And they did struggle with that earlier in the season. They've done better at finishing at the rim, but that can hurt them if they're missing these easy layups. Lamson to Sulakowski. Sulakowski drains the three. Lamson, great inbound pass. Sulakowski is now one of one, and TA's lead is five. That was a deep three, and they're shooting from a great percentage already. Great layup opportunity there for Julia Reed. Sulakowski came out with the rebound. Lamson off to Sulakowski. We've talked about her not shooting as well from the three point line this year as she did last year been more of an in the paint contributor. She hit a three early in this game. That's the reason why Tia has a five point lead. Noble's gonna have to be, Noble, excuse me, Gorham, we did Noble the other night. <laughs> Gorham's gonna have to be crisp in transition tonight if they wanna keep up with this fast paced Trojans offense. They had a chance there but couldn't get it to go. Lamson is blocked on her shot out of bounds, that block. Came from number 15, that's Summer Gammon. Pass just out of reach of Gammon. Now Lamson with the three, got it. The three ball is working for TA right now. Three for four, how about that? What a start for the Trojans. Now back with it is Lauren Dunbar. Julia Reed, Gammon. Julia Reed, the three. Off the mark, rebound Lampson. Just the confidence that Lampson plays with. She's brought a new element of energy to this offense and a great pass. Nice pass from Lampson to Emily Coleman. It's an 11 to one point lead and timeout called. What a start for Thorne Academy with the replay here. We'll check out the replay. Kylie Lampson doing a great job on the help. Goes straight up and forces the miss here. TA's come out and blitz score them. They've gotten into these passing lanes, gotten some steals, done a good job cleaning up the glass, and the vision in transition off of the missed basket. Kylie Lampson with a long pass, and Emily Coleman benefits from a good feed and lays it up and in. Great start for Thorne Academy, exactly what they needed. This is what they didn't have versus South Portland. They struggled to get early baskets. But the craziest thing is, is that TA just all around has been so much more consistent this year shooting yes, the ball. La last year we saw them just, you know, throwing up threes, tough shots. You know, sometimes we're playing a little more desperately than they needed to be. This year they seem so much more calm, working very well together, have great team chemistry, and they're scoring baskets. That's why they have a 10-point lead right here. That, there were some ugly performances last year. Some, you know, players would go like two for ten from three, and that's not going to get it done. But Kylie Lampson's really been the glue for this offense, and they've been doing well moving without the ball and getting open from three and not getting – the opponents haven't been able to contest them very well. And they're clearly feeding off of this energy. Huge crowd on hand and a great 10-point lead early. Sulkowski's playing on Ellie Gay, Gorm's top scorer, and Ellie Gay hasn't touched the ball tonight. And this is her first touch here. Takes a three now, driving inside. Gay goes up, and it will not fall. Rebound goes to the Dow. Tough shot there from Ellie Gay. She's definitely a slasher, and they're going to have to stop her from getting in the middle of the paint because that's where she's best. And Sulakowski did a nice job denying the ball, not even letting her get it until just then. Lamson, long three, short. Rebound to Dunbar. There goes Gorham. They need a basket. Staying this one in the first quarter in the corner. Here's Gammon. Gammon drives inside. Two steps. That one won't fall. A couple of tough shots for Gorham so far. TA now in transition. Sulikowski gives it to Cook. Cook will take the three. That one's just short. Sulikowski fighting for the rebound. She grabs Great it. Great play. 
This three goes up from Cook and it's good. Zulikowski rebound pass back to Cook. Her second three on that possession is that, good. That was all Sulikowski tracks down the rebound, stayed with the basketball, and found a shooter out on the wing. Summer Gammon misses the three. For the pass inside, that one goes to Reed. Nice pass there from Kaylin Curtis to, it's actually Dunbar, excuse me, on that basket. They respond. So Gorham clearly likes to operate in the paint, as we've seen. Hasn't shot the three as much as T.A. is going to. Pass inside to Dow, back out to Sulikowski, and she's got it. The three ball is absolutely on fire. I think we got somebody tossing around T-shirts in the stands here. A little T-shirt can on the Hoops for Hope night. We're back here, we apologize for that technical difficulty. Had some issues with the broadcast, but should be back up right now and working. One play we did miss was a steal and score from Sulikowski to make it 19 to three. Now it's 19 to four as Ellie Gay gets the first free throw to fall. Morgan Bolduck into the game, TA going into their bench. Bulldog a couple nights ago at home versus Gorham had three three-pointers. Both are good from Gay. Her first two points of the game, 19 to five as we get close to two minutes left in the first quarter. Back it up top, here's Morgan Bulldog, first time in the game. She took out Hannah Cook, who had six points. This three from the corner from Lamson's off the mark, and rebound goes to Dunbar. Pass inside now out, looking for a three. As I've said, T.A. clearly feeding off of the crowd, but we'll see if Gorham can settle into this game, work the ball inside and get back into this because they've fallen into a hole in this first quarter. That was off the hand of Sulikowski, who is guarding Ellie Gay very aggressively. He's doing a great job so far, and it's working. As she hasn't gotten many opportunities to shoot the ball today. Now back up top, off the face of a Gorham player, out of bounds, kicked. It will be a TA possession. I'll give a shout out to somebody watching on, on Facebook from sunny South Englewood, Florida. Which is, I can say for a fact, definitely has better uh, weather than we do here as it snowed almost all day. Good to still get this game in though. We weren't sure if it was gonna happen. Snow day here at TA, but they're still able to get Hoops for Hope in. And a big crowd braving the weather. Driving inside. That layup, oh, bounced off the rim twice. Rebound to Sulikowski. Gorm having a tough time getting their baskets to fall tonight. They've got some size, but they haven't been able to use that. Kalen Curtis is coming off of a 21 point performance their last game. What a pass from Morgan Bolduck to the cutting Jessica Dow, Dow's first basket. And T.A. now leads by 16. It's 21 to five, under a minute to go. Gay okay, now over into the corner to Kaylin Curtis. Curtis trying to drive in on Dow. Good defense by Dow. Trying to switch it back up top to Gammon. Gammon back to Curtis. Curtis trying to find an option. Was looking for the cutting Ellie Gay, but couldn't get it to her. Now driving inside, Gammon, Gay. And gets it wow. off the rim and in. That was a break for Gorham because Sulkowski had a great contest on the ball. Tia's doing a good job denying the lane. Gorham's trying to drive, but they haven't been able to successfully. Cut the lead to 14, now 20 seconds. Could hold for the last shot. Assuming. Lampson behind the back. Lost control of it. Here's Sulkowski. Now six seconds. Trying to go up with it. Couldn't get it to go. Grabs her own rebound. Here's Bulldog. Bulldog out up top. Down the three. As time expires, oh, off the rim. Good shot and attempt there. Did not go, but TA still holding on to a dominant lead, 21-7. to We'll take a break here on TA TV. Stick with us as we come back to the second quarter. Hey, Dan. How's that proposal coming? Just finished. I am sending it right now. Okay, good. <laughs> oh. 
How are we looking for noon? We got like two minutes. Dan. TATV. I'm Zach Tarenko with Cole Purvis. As always, bring you this great Hoops for Hope event and game. TA right now dominating the Gorham Rams 21 to 7 thanks to some really good three-point shooting so far. Cole, it's been a great one. What have you seen from TA? The confidence that they've showed shooting from beyond the arc and they're not afraid to pull the trigger early and often and they've gotten open from three. Dow to Hannah Cook, and she drains it, her third three of the game. Dow with a great pass. It's all been all about the facilitating on offense, finding the open player, and Hannah Cook has been open three times already, and she's hit all three. So many great catch-and-shoot players on this offense. We'll see next week if Chevris is able to stop them because Gorham certainly hasn't been able to so far. You mentioned it earlier, Cole. I think a lot of this is feeding off the, the, the crowd, oh, energy yeah. of the crowd. But also this event, this is just how T.A. plays. Now driving inside, Gammon with her first basket of the day. A little bit of a breakdown on defense. Sulkowski couldn't quite help in time, but good for Gorham to be able to work the lane and get two. Here's Bullduck. Sulkowski from the Trojan head. Oh my goodness. Sulkowski was not afraid to take that one. Wow. Morgan Bulldog, her second assist. Sulikowski, her third three. She's perfect from the three-point line in this game. Pulling up from the Trojan head is crazy, especially in-game. That's hard to do. Now good work defensively. Sulikowski goes right back to work being aggressive, forces the jump ball. Yeah, Cole, we... The only other person I've ever seen take a Trojan, hit a Trojan head shot in a game is Braden Kamari. We know he's got range. Sitting in the front row over there. Boys team will play Gorham for the second time. Of course, these two teams playing for the third time because of Massabisa canceling their season, so they had to pick up another game. And they pick up a game versus Gorham and Chevris. Yes. Two very good opponents. The boys team plays Gorham tomorrow in the afternoon at 1 p.m. Dow. Yeah, timeout. they're going to need a timeout. That was just a breakdown defensively. No effort, and Dow beat the Gorham defender off the dribble. That's too easy. We'll stay here for the timeout, 29-9. to So boys team will play Gorham tomorrow at 1 p.m. That's at Gorham. That's only, as Cole said, they picked up two games because Massapisic uh, dropped out of the varsity um, schedule. The boys team... Uh, did not have that issue, so they didn't have to pick up a third game against Gorham. They beat Gorham in this building earlier this season. It was a great game. Cole and I had a great call of that one. Tia hopefully looking to build off that win versus Noble from last night. It was a great game last night, and you were waiting for TA to break it open and go on a run, but they did not shoot well, did not play well offensively at all, and Gorham was able to hang in it. They were a tough team that defensively they were able to get in TA's head, but TA picks up another win and then plays the Gorham boys, as you said, on the road tomorrow, which was a great meeting the first time. TA shooting 7 of 11 from the three-point line right now. It's a fantastic number. This ball goes back out to Gammon. Gammon, good crossover dribble, goes up. She's fouled and won. Summer Gammon, great job there, driving to the paint. She's got four points, looking to make it five. She's heading to the, th the free throw line. Good ball handling there against a tough Trojans paint defense. She went really high off the window for that one. Gammon misses, rebound, Sulikowski. Here's Hannah Cook, over to Sulikowski. Got Gammon to jump, 
Bulldogs, mid-range, no good. Rebound to Gammon. Gammon's been active in the last few minutes for the Rams. Taking the ball up now is Julia Reed. Off to Summer Gammon. Gammon gets inside, lost control of her dribble. Picked up by Bulldog. Comes away with it. Now Sulikowski with the layup, with the underhand. Sulikowski now has 13 in the first half. She hit another gear with that one, just turned up the speed and blew by Gorham. And guys scoop layup to finish it off. 20 point lead. Inside now driving as Julia Reed goes up with it. In and out, unlucky there, rebound to Morgan Bolduck. And here goes the Trojans. Sulikowski will take the three. In and out, unlucky, but a rebound to Jessica Dow. Dow trying to spin, goes up. It's gonna count as a block. Oh, she got hit, Coach Marson did too. A little bit of a heat check for Sulikowski. They've been shooting a great percentage so far. Reed now, Ellie Gay in the corner, her three, she got it. Julia Reed with a nice pass. Ellie Gay starting to hit her shots for the Rams. The lead's been cut to 17. Yeah, the Trojans have been able to take away the other team's best player a lot this season, and they've done that so far with Ellie Gay, but finally gets into the scoring there for the three. Dow, Bulldog. Sulikowski was near the Trojan head, and it looked like she, she hesitated a little bit, was thinking about it again. Sulikowski missed the last one, but still three of four today. Driving inside, the layup. Couldn't get to fall. Kaylin Curtis grabbed the rebound. A foul. That should be a jump ball, I believe. Oh, well, no, it is on Zulikowski. That's yeah, her second foul. Hacked the arm of Kaylin Curtis and a little frustration. Couldn't get the layup to go. And they'll check back on Emily Coleman and Kylie Lampson. Good thing about this team is they don't have to rely on one star. That's been something we've been bringing up all season long, and the scoring has really been spread out. Sulikowski had a good game their last game. Foul called on Claudia Pelletier, her first time in the game. Finish my point. Dow's had her nights. Morgan Bulldog had a good night against Noble a couple games ago. And then Hannah Cook can light it up from downtown as well. Julia Reed getting, getting her first basket, going to the line. Going to make a three-point play. Won't fall. Rebound Sulikowski. Gorham has settled into this game a little bit, but that first quarter run by the Trojans might be too much for them. Look on Facebook, guys. That's a nice basket hit there. That was a great shot, a lefty spin move. Got it to go with the left hand. Out of bounds will stay TA, excuse me, Gorham possession. We have a couple people watching on Facebook. We have someone watching from Marco Island. And we have somebody watching from Fredericton, Canada. Very nice. And <sighs> Jeff Christianberry enjoying <laughs> Florida. Come on, man. Ellie Gay's three is no good. Rebound Kylie Lampson. TA TV going international. <laughs> He's uh, enjoying the weather down in Port Charlotte. I hope you're having a good time, Jeff, because it was cold today, and I did not enjoy oh, yeah. how cold it was. No, no snow days in Florida, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, we've getting some. We've got some international viewers. We got people from a plane. You can watch TA TV from anywhere. Just be ready, Jeff. I am saving some snowballs, so <laughs> the next broadcast we have, you better be ready. I think they'll melt in here. <laughs> I have a special cooler that stays at zero degrees. That three is off the mark from Coleman. Rebound for Elizabeth Willett. Going inside, Willett gets what it to go. A, what a take. Good shot fake to start it off and then a little Euro step in the lane. Here's Bullduck. Back out to Pelletier. Gorm's a team that's battled some injuries. Vanessa Walker is one of their best players and she has been out and will remain out for this game. So they've gone a little bit shorthanded. Definitely not as good as the team last year that went to the state final. Gorm played TA in the Hoops for Hope game last year. Yeah. And Gorm is, TA is basically doing what Gorm did to them last year where they just dominated the first couple quarters and TA could never come back. Gay steps into a three, no good. Rebound Coleman. Gay now one of three from 
the three-point line. It's a 15-point lead for TA. So you've got 90 seconds left, and you definitely want to be patient here. Don't want to let Gorham get back into the action and score. Got to settle it, settle it down on offense, and it's up to Kylie Lampson to do that. Lampson's pass was tipped into the fan section. Luckily, the fans were informed and were ready and ducked. <laughs> Lampson, stutter step move, trying to take Willette one-on-one, -on -one, gives it off to Pelletier. Couldn't control the dribble right off the bat, so wasn't able to put up a shot. Now Pelletier looking for a pass. Here's Lampson out to Bulldock. Here's Coleman now. Outside the three-point line, looking for a pass. Gives it to Bulldock. No shot clock, so all the time in the world. Nice pass from Bulldock to Coleman. Bulldock has four assists. Coleman, her second basket. T.A., everybody is working well together in this one. That's why they have a 17-point lead. That's the chemistry. Coleman just rolling to the basket, and Bulldock with the awareness to time up that pass and feed her. Here's Dunbar, Gammon, R Reed. Now over to Ellie Gay, who hasn't come out of the game yet. Gay over to Willette. Willette, great fake, and her layup was no good. Grabbed her own rebound. Willette looking for a pass. Three, three seconds. seconds in the paint. So the three from Gay would count, would not count. Should have just gone up with that. You could have finished or gotten a foul from T.A. Dow went in to swat one of those layups and almost got a piece of it. They'll get their starting five back on for the final 26 seconds. Lamson going up the floor slowly. No shot clock in Maine High School basketball. She will not hold for the last shot, and she's stripped from behind by Summer Gammon. Her skim at second block. Gay tipped, a pass is tipped by Hannah Cook. 8.1 seconds left. Two subs going to check back in. Pelletier and Bolduck, who just came off, are going right back on. So Coach Marson's got some plan in his head. Yep, defensive players, Pelletier and Bolduck, very fast and can defend the ball very well. Kaelin Curtis, here's Reed. Four seconds. Reed looking for a pass inside. Curtis can't control it. Pelletier comes away with it, and that'll do it for the first half. Thorne Academy leads 35 to 18, a solid first half for them. The three-point shooting was the key. We'll take a break here on TATV. We'll be back for some halftime thoughts and the second half of action. Hey, Dan. How's that proposal coming? Just finished. I am sending it right now. Okay, good. <laughs> oh. How are we looking for noon? We got like two minutes. Dan. to attend Tams because it was a change of scenery. It was a much smaller school. Because of the amazing teachers. How small it is and the community about it and how everybody knows each other. You can know all the kids here, so it makes it much more easier to make friends. They just get you ready for high school. Tams is special. Tams is amazing. Tams is fabulous. Tams is fun. Tams feels like a family.
We are back here on TATV. I'm Zach Jarenko with Cole Purvis, Josh Pulsford, and Troy Bulldog bringing you the halftime show brought to you by Top It Mobile Ice Cream Card. If you need an ice cream slash frozen dessert cart for any of your event needs, that could be a birthday, a wedding, a bar mitzvah, you, or you could just want a cart with ice cream just to hang out because that's all. That's what you that's deliver all, it to your house. Yeah, it's all you need. You can call or go online to the great people of Top It Mobile Ice Cream Cart at www.topitonthego.com. But Cole, first half, great three-point shooting performance from Thornton Academy. Hannah Cook has three threes. Sulikowski, three threes as well, one of, the, one of which was from the Trojan head. Lamson has, has one. They dominated both sides of the floor, had some great defense. Sulikowski has had some great defense on Ellie Gay. What will Gorham need to do in the second half if they want to get back in this game? Well, they've got to close out on shooters in the perimeter, and T.A. has done a nice job cutting without the ball and getting open at the top of the key and in the corner for these three-point shots. And uh, they've, they've had some defensive breakdowns. T.A. has been able to drive by them easily a couple times as well. But Gorham, for Gorham, they've just got to work the ball in the paint and hope, honestly just hope T.A. does not shoot as well as they did in the first half because that was a remarkable shooting performance from the Trojans. And... If they can shoot like that the rest of the season, I don't see any team that's going to beat them. So we'll see if they can keep up the energy. And if they do go a little bit cold from three, how do they respond? How do they work the ball inside and uh, just facilitate this offense if they're not shooting the three well? Shout out to Will Davies, Kyle Lasser, and cannon, baby. AJ Thibodeau, the fan section. Going all the way up members, top. Members, yeah, who are throwing T-shirts now. Homemade T-shirt cannons. One more time, I want to plug the Hoops for Hope Maine. You can still donate or go online for more information. You can go to www.hoopsforhopemaine.com and you can donate right on the page. You can There's a spot where you can enter your information and, and donate. Or you can also Venmo them if that's easier for you. That Venmo link is also on the website. So go there for more information or a place to donate to the great cause for cancer research. They have given the crowd something to cheer for so far just raining three-pointers, and the energy is clearly in the building. Sulikowski gave it to Lamson. Now Lamson, crossover dribble. The floater got it to go. Lamson all by herself, getting a basket early in the second half. It's now 37-18. and 18. That was Lamson's third basket. She has seven points today with three rebounds and two assists. It's always nice when you pick up a freshman that can create for herself off the dribble. It was really a perfect transition. The only starter TA lost from last year was Mackenzie Melendez and they replaced her with a point guard who's clearly, clearly a star so far. Summer Gammon, Ellie Gay faked the three, drives inside and throws it at the fan section. That one was looking for her teammate Kaylin Curtis who was the top of the key. Unfortunately, Evan Bonet, Baudet is not on the Gorham girls basketball <laughs> team. He made a good catch, though. He did. I got a ball last night in the first row. Here is Lampson, the three. Pass came from Dow. Lampson, her second three. She's two of five. And T.A. is rolling yet again. to 40 point mark already. Great start. Gorham kept it closer in the first two matchups. This one, they're having a tough time. Here is Julia Reed inside to Kaylin Curtis. Curtis was looking for the cutting Ellie Gay, trying to work on Dow. Dow, great defense. Here's Reed. Now Dunbar. Dunbar taking the spot of Vanessa Walker, who, as Cole mentioned, is still not playing right now for Gorham. That one is blocked from Kylie Lampson. Great block there. Here's Dow. Back over to Sulikowski. TA's defense has been extremely aggressive, and part of that is the crowd and feeding off of this energy, and part of it is the fact that this is the third time they've played Gorham, and they know how they're going to approach the game as an offense. Sulikowski drives in, layup is good. Great job by Sulikowski. She now has 15 points, and TA's lead is up over 20 now. Timeout called by Gorham. We'll keep it here. It's not a great effort by Gorham. is driving right by them. And when they have worked it in the paint, they've also been able to kick it out for three. So Gorham's going to have to be quicker on their feet when guarding the ball because Sulikowski blew by the defender right there and went off the glass for an easy two. 
Great crowd on hand, as you may be able to see. Tons of fans around us in the Gorm section and, as you can see, in the fan section and on the far side. Again, shout out to Gorham for uh, embracing the Hoops for Hope yes. too. They're also wearing the shirts, which is good to see. They wore, all the players wore the long sleeve Hoops for Hope shirts during warmups as well. It's just great to see that, that everybody involved is coming, yeah. not just to watch basketball, but to see this event and be a part of it and be, you know, you know give some money and, and be in the raffles or give some money for the 50-50 or just donate in general. Yeah, it's a great cause no matter what side you're on and Gorham's been a part of this for the past two years. Gorham girls won last year over TA. There was all, it was, last year was also a double header, so boys played Gorham yeah. as well. The boys won that one. That was a fantastic game. Ended up being 73-71, to 71, and that is Julia Reed fouled on her way up. And that layup, she'll go to the line and shoot two. Yeah, TA and Gorham is a good budding rivalry in both boys and girls basketball. And I just want to say one more time, we mentioned it earlier, definitely tune in for that uh, girls basketball broadcast versus yes. Chevris on Wednesday the 25th because that will be an awesome game. Chevris is a powerhouse team in Class AA North and TA, of course, undefeated and uh, the consensus best team in AA South. So definitely be there. It'll be a huge broadcast for us. It'll be the first big test of does TA match up with teams in the North. Kaylin yeah. Curtis comes out with the rebound there. Sheriff's is definitely a team that they want to play. They want to see where their talent is in comparison. For sure. Lazat and Fitzpatrick on that team have been dominant this year. That layup from Reed is off the mark. He's got to finish that. Yeah, they haven't been able to get any production and a good pass and could not finish. Behind the back and then into the three from Kylie Lampson. Lampson doing a great job right now. She has eight points in the second half. This is a breakout game for her in front of the biggest crowd of the year. She stepped up to the task so far. So Lukowski goes up. No good rebound for Julia Reed. Gorham's been kind of going through the motions, getting a little bit sloppy. They're going to need something quick if they even want to make it close in this one. 36 point, excuse me, 26 point lead right now for Thorne Academy. That's an offensive foul. On Gorham, be TA possession, 45 to 19. TA putting up impressive numbers right now, 45 points already. This is a team that you would expect them to stay roughly around the 50 or 60 point range in their first two matchups. Sulekowski with an easy layup. Yep, nice layup there for Sulekowski. TA won 58 to 40 in the first matchup, and then 50 to 45. So haven't gone to the 60 point mark yet. We'll see if they can reach it tonight. Gaze layup, no good. She's holding her face. Rebound to Jessica Dow. Lampson spinning, off to Cook. Cook's three, off the mark. Close one there from Cook. Looks like they're gonna stop for a second just because the ref wanted to make sure that Ellie Gay was okay. She'll come take a seat. And our athletic trainer, Tony Giordano, will go over to make sure that she is okay. Of course, injuries aside, Gorham's gotta be very tired. This TA defense has worn them out so far. Reed over to Gammon. We'll assume we'll see Ellie Gay back in the game if she is okay in the next minute or so as she's been Gorham's best player and they're gonna want her on the floor. Score some points and what a rejection from Sue Lukowski on Summer Gammon. Got her whole hand on that one and swatted that to the floor. That reminded me of a guy last night by the name of Clay Thompson who got all ball. Okay, Cole. Cole, you never fail to talk about the Warriors on our broadcasts. You know what, Cole? I will get, do you one better <laughs> as Sulikowski steals this one away. The Celtics beat the Warriors last night, didn't they, Cole? They did. Great pass from Sulikowski to Kylie Lampson, who's racking up the points here in the third quarter. She's got 10 in this quarter. 30-point lead, certainly unexpected. We thought this would be a tight matchup. Lampson. Gives 
Gives it over to Hannah Cook. Now back out to Morgan Bolduck. Bolduck to Jessica Dow. Dow trying to get around. Will let. Great work by Dow working through the pressure. She's got six points, and TA is now up 32 points on the Gorham Rams. Dow got a little bit of an arm bar there and was still able to finish. Here's Willette. Stolen away by Sulakowski. Her fourth steal goes up and lays it in. Sulakowski has 19. This team just wants it more. Getting into passing lanes, stealing the ball easily, diving for loose balls on the floor as you see here. Doing the tenacious work on defense and then it's just catch and shoot, catch and shoot on offense. Everything's been working for them. Yep, full timeout for the Gorham Rams. We'll take it to here on Tate TV. Be back for the rest of the third quarter. Hey Dan, how's that proposal coming? Just finished, I am sending it right now. Okay, good. <laughs> oh no. How are we looking for noon? We got like two minutes. Dan. TATV. They just called the 50-50 raffle ticket winning number. If you left the game and you bought a 50-50 number and you won to come claim your prize, I don't remember the number. I lost control. Of it. <laughs> I don't I, by saying that, I lost the number, so, well, I'm no help to you Started anymore. with a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Yep. Lampson's three is good. That's a long one. Kylie Lampson. Hit the three. Gorm. Having a discussion with the ref. Love to see what this is. Definitely going to be an interesting call, but a high arcing three from Lampson, and she can't miss right now. Oh. See if they take it off the board or not. I'm not sure what happened. The floor looks like it was wet, but it's going to count as Pelletier checks in for Lampson. Lampson. Four of seven from the three-point line today. That assist came from Sulikowski, who's having a great day for the Trojans. Camden Roach on as well, one of the seniors on this team. Again, you could not have asked for anything better out of Kylie Lampson this season. Exactly what this team needed. They had a hole at point guard, and she filled that very, very well. So Lukowski comes out with that rebound. And a foul called on Gorham. That foul is on Willette, her first. And Thorne Academy will take the ball out here. It's Morgan Bulldock, 56 to 19. One minute, 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Here's Sulakowski will put up a mid-range jumper off the backboard, no good. Rebound to Willette. Well, that's third rebound. That long pass to Gay, and Gay just threw it away. Should have gone up with it. Not going to get many chances in transition like that. Gay was looking for a teammate, and that'll be out of bounds. It'll be TA possession. Summer Gammon will take a seat for number 24. That is Logan Doughty for the Gorham Rams. Actually, it's going to look like it's be off TA, so Gorham will keep possession. So even though it didn't really work out for Gorham, they'll get the ball back. First game between these two teams was 58 to 40, TA won. Second game was 50 to 45, TA also won. And now we have 56 to 19. What a shocking score. Willette, who's picked up a bigger role in Vanessa Walker's absence. It's going to be a foul call. It's going to be on Hannah Cook, her third foul. 
Yeah, and certainly Gorham has somewhat of an excuse. They're missing some of their best players and also lost a strong senior class from last year, so it's been uh, next man up for them. But they have not been able to compete with TA tonight. It's Ellie Gay now driving inside, looking out. Gay will take a three, and she gets it. That pass came from Dellinger. Ellie Gay gets some more points. She has 10 now. Reached the 10 point mark now in every game except for one. Nice pass to Sulakowski. Tried the floater. Rebound comes down. Well, Let has it. Pass went to Gay. Has it now. Guarded by Sulakowski as the third quarter ends. So Thorne Academy with a dominant. 56 to 22 lead. We'll see where this one goes in the fourth quarter. We'll take a break on TA TV. Stick with us. I chose to attend Tams because it was a change of scenery. It was a much smaller school. Because of the amazing teachers. It's how small it is and the community about it and how everybody knows each other. You can know all the kids here, so it makes it much more easier to make friends. They just get you ready for high school. Tams is special. Tams is amazing. Tams is fabulous. Tams is fun. Tams feels like a family. TV. I heard the number again for the 50-50 and I forget it again. I don't know what's happening with me. TA will have possession to start the fourth quarter. They are up by 34. Colts with such a great game so far. Both Sulikowski and Lamps have had great games. What's been the biggest factor in this lead? They, they've just wanted it more. Getting into passing lanes, stealing these passes, and of course Maybe the best three-point performance that they've had all season long. Kylie Lampson has been incredible. Hannah Cook had a good first half. Lampson's three is in and out. Then Pelletier's rebound no good. Dow trying to go up with it. Back out to Kylie Lampson. No good. On the ground, fought for. Pelletier grabbed the rebound. They're looking for it. Lampson. Puts this one up, that one's no good. Lamson tried a few, and it comes out to Moreland. Yeah, why not? Why not keep shooting these threes? And for Gorham, got to get into the full of your offense here, but it's going to be too little too late. Here's Moreland trying to go up with it. Moreland won't fall. Rebound to Lamson. Lamson will take it out. It's always nice when you can have that one player that can just take over a game. But for TA, they have multiple. Addison Sulikowski with TA's backs up against the wall against the South Portland team the other night. Put the team on her back and scored 27. Kylie Lampson is a player that can do that as well. Dow hasn't scored a ton this season, but when they need her to, she can take over the game. So there's a lot of players that can just be really clutch for this team, and that's encouraging when you think about the postseason. They're having a bad night shooting. They have multiple players that can settle it down and be that leader and get it going on offense. Definitely, and as you were talking about Sulikowski, she scored a basket, has 21 now. Timeout white as three subs were about to check in. This might be the end of some of the TA players, Sulikowski, Dow, and Lampson. Maybe even Cook may all end up on the bench. TA with something that you might not see for a team you know, with so much depth and so much talent is a team that doesn't really have many subs. Uh, on right now, they do have a player injured, Catherine LeBlanc, but still, they only have, I'm trying to count right now, five, they've got five players and five bench players. And all the bench players are out. Bulldog Pelletier, Roach, Laura LeBlanc, and Riley Rose. 58 to 22. Here's the blank. Good to see these players getting into a game like this. And that's going to be double dribble on the blank. 
Yeah, and it'll be good experience for some of these players like Riley Rose and Laura LeBlanc. Played a little bit in the JV game before this. They're gonna have some bigger roles coming up in the coming years here at TA. Three, off the mark, rebound to Claudia Pelletier. Pelletier driving up, layup, will fall. Pelletier's first basket, good for her. The senior to get a basket on the Hoops for Hope game. Now a lot of players liked seniors. It's important for them and exciting to score on senior night. I think for Thorne Academy specifically, I think this is um, this is a game you want to score in as a Hoops for Hope game. It's such a big thing for Thorne Academy girls team. Yeah, definitely something that Coach Marson and his family loves. It's one of their uh, something that they love to do, put on this event. The players have really bought in with the money that they donate and just their excitement for this game. It's been a big buildup, and they've definitely shown some good basketball so far, to say the least, 60 to 23. This one's good from Thibodeau, off the bench for Gorham, 60 to 23. 5.36 to go. There's Pelletier, over to Bolduck. Bolduck faked the shot, drives inside. Bolduck goes up and got it. Morgan Bolduck. Thanks to Claudia Pelletier. Bullock gets on in the scoring sheet. Seven players with a basket today for the Trojans. Inside, out, the three is good. Three from number 25, Thibodeau. Pass came from Doughty. Now here's Riley Rose, stripped from behind. Doughty comes up with it. Good steal. Dowdy and the Rams now trying to get inside. Player on the ground. Jump ball. And possession arrow will stay Gorham. Gorham's way at the moment. The pass comes out to Dowdy. Now here's Dellinger. Dellinger over this. Two from Dowdy's off the mark. A rebound for Morgan Bolduck. Bolduck with some speed, driving up. And it rolls around the rim. Dowdy comes out with the rebound. That pass. Football throw. That's up out of the reach of the Gorham player. Good aggressive play by the bench here, Morgan Bolduck. Working in transition, we know she's fast. Good, look, look, good lacrosse player, too. Bold luck going to play Division Two lacrosse at Assumption College. She had a national letter of intent signing day earlier in the year, in the fall. Congrats to her. Riley Rose comes up with the steal. Rose had a season high nine points in the win over Noble last week. Nice move by Bulldog, and she's fouled on her way up. She tried a reverse layup. Bulldog will go to the line and shoot two. These are the top two teams in Class AA South, according to heel points. Sanford is right behind Gorham with the same record at 7 and 4, but with the heel points, Gorham is in front, and oh. TA has handled every team in the South so far, so definitely state championship or bust for them, but they'll get to see some of the talent up north next week against Chevres. They'll have five days off. You almost don't want that much time because yeah. they're so hot shooting from three right now. We'll see if they can play as aggressive on Wednesday against a very good Stags team. Inside, Pelletier got a hand on that one. Pushes it out of bounds. Look at our streaming schedule in the next week or so. Tomorrow at 5.50, don't forget, tomorrow at 5.50, as fouled there is number 21, Moreland. Should go to the line and shoot two. Tomorrow at 5.50, boys hockey versus Brunswick. It'll be a short crew there. So I will be on that call. Just you. Yeah, <laughs> first solo broadcast. Cole has a track meet, I assume, yep. I believe. Yes, so good luck to Cole tomorrow. 
Um, but yes, boys, hockey versus Brunswick, the reigning Class B champions who are undefeated. TA coming off a loss on when, uh, excuse me, Thursday to the Falmouth Navigators. And then on Wednesday, as Cole and I have mentioned, the game that we all recommend you come and watch or listen to, it's TA versus the Chevrolet Stags girls basketball. It's TA matches up against their hardest opponent of the season. Yeah, and the hockey team, they've only dropped two games, but they've both been to the Falmouth Navigators. So, of course, hockey, there's no north and south. It's just statewide. So we'll see how long it'll take them until they have to play that team in the playoffs. A blank went up, and she was fouled late. She'll go to the line. Yeah, sometimes you look at a matchup like the Brunswick Dragons, you say, oh, Class B. You know, it's, it's going to be an easy one, but it's really not. Yeah. Brunswick ran through Class B last year to a state championship title, and they shut out. Um, I forget who they sh uh, they shut out in the state championship, but. I think it was Camden Hills. Yes, it was Camden Hills. Great memory, Cole. I know. Look at that memory. It'll, but, be, uh, a, it'll be a tough opponent. Again, they went undefeated. They tied once because after one overtime, they... They finish in a tie as LeBlanc gets a point for the game. Good for her. Yeah, the good teams in Class B can certainly compete with the teams in Class A, and we know that's been a discussion with the reclassification situation in Maine. You look at a game like that, and the only common opponent between the two teams, Brunswick beat Cape Elizabeth 6-1. to TA beat them 3 nothing. It's really not a lot to look at between the two teams, but I'm assuming it'll be a great game. Again, I'll be on the call for that one. Josh Paulsfer will be helping us out on tech. And Troy Bulldog will be on camera as well. Shout out to Troy. Troy's. Oh, oh yeah, I don't definitely. Think, I don't think Troy's missed a game this year. He, I don't think he has either. No, he hasn't. He's the Iron Man. Troy is the most committed out of all of us. He definitely is. Bulldog going to give her a wide open three just off the mark. He is by far the best cameraman in the state of Maine. And yes. May, and maybe the world. Seriously, we do have great. great I'm, jo I'm half joking when I say that because we do have great camera work. He never misses a play. Camera work always looks absolutely perfect. We do appreciate all that Troy does for us. Now we've got him looped in. He can't. He now he can't quit or or miss a game. If he misses a game, now we're we'll just, call him out. Yeah, it's not it's not looking good for Troy if he if he has some kind of uh, you know personal you know event or something that comes up. You'll be on the call in a solo broadcast. I mean, you you do already do the heavy lifting for the hockey broadcast. We all know that you're a big hockey guy, but Solo broadcast will be something that – have you ever done that? Not. No, I haven't. I actually haven't. Well, there, there, it'll be a first then. I, I remember, and I don't mean to – you know, I, I hope Jeff's still watching here because I'm going to call him out a little bit here. I remember one of the early games that I did broadcasting. Uh, we Jeff w was a little preoccupied with uh, watching a sports game on his phone, <laughs> and I did most of the talking for the game. As that three goes up from Gorham. And was it Liverpool or something? And I, I believe it was football. I think we oh, maybe okay. had a game on a Thursday night. And he was just watching the game. And, I mean, it was fine. It, we, I was able to, to do it. But never, like, a truly solo broadcast before. Yeah. Sorry, Jeff. I don't, don't mean to uh, uh, put you out there. But, <laughs> you know. There's Pelletier. Under two minutes to go. TA is going to secure this one. LeBlanc, the three. Off the mark. Close one there, rebound to Moreland. I know you'll be missing my hockey expertise tomorrow. I will. I'm quite the expert. You know, I will say, Cole, you don't give yourself enough credit because I think truly at the end of the day, your understanding of hockey is not as bad as you think it is. It really isn't. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I know you don't watch hockey, but to, for someone who doesn't watch a lot of hockey, to have that kind of knowledge, still the knowledge that you have is, is, is very good. So... Give yourself a little more credit. It's really well, not. It's really not that bad. I, I I know sometimes you like to say you know you don't know anything about hockey or you know, but you do. Thank you for the compliment. Yeah. Now, now don't make any more mistakes. <laughs> or I'll, I'll be calling you out like I'll be calling Troy out if he misses a game. Ta's doubled the score here. Long throw. Here's Moreland driving to the lane. One-handed layup is good. Four. Lindy Moreland. And one more shout-out to the crowd for sticking around. I know it's a blowout, but they've done a, a great job donating to this cause. A lot of them were out in the uh, the lobby beforehand, putting in their tickets into the for the raffle items. It was a great crowd here as time winds down. 
Dowdy will take one more shot as time expires, and that is it. Thorne Academy wins 64 to 30 in a dominant win over the Gorham Rams. Not only that, they move on to 13 and 0. Yes, you heard that right, 13 and 0. They are undefeated in this game. Our post-game thoughts and recap is brought to you by the Webb Family Law Firm. And that mic has been has been you know, given bu buzzing a lot this game. Someone's got to turn that off. But yes, Cole, 64 to 30, great game for the girls team, what, what did you like from this game for, for the girls? Obviously the story is going to be the shooting, but I look at the defense. They were extremely, that ton of hustle plays on defense and just getting into passing lanes, easy steals, lots of deflections, and stopping Gorham's transition game, which is what they're good at. They shut down Ellie Gay, Gorham's best player. I know they've had some injuries, but we definitely expected Gorham to put up a little bit of a better fight, and we'll see if TA can take this momentum into Chevrolet next week, which is going to be a huge game against some star power in the Class AA North region. Yes, it definitely will. So again, thank you all for listening. And anybody who donated or even just went on to the Hoops or Hope main page, we really do appreciate it here. We know that uh, Eric and Nancy Marston do appreciate it as well. Such a great event, such a great night. TA wins 64 to 30. So for Zach Tarenko, Cole Purvis, Josh Pulsifer, and Troy Polduck on camera saying thank you for watching and we will see you tomorrow for Boys Hockey versus Brunswick. Have a great night, everybody.